Good afternoon. I have a few words to say about President Townsend, and I'm going to open my remarks with um, a state, not so much a statement, but by way of another composer that introduced Douglas Townsend to the world. And that composer was not known as, a, well, he was sort of known as a composer at the time, and that was Bernard Herrmann. If you read in your notes, you'll see that his first piece that, he, that Douglas Townsend had premiered was a piece called Concert Dances, at the age of 17, performed by the CBS Symphony Orchestra under Bernard Herrmann. At the time, Bernard Herrmann was sort of known as a radio composer because of the Mercury Theater. He was not yet known as the composer of Citizen Kane, Psycho, Vertigo, Taxi Driver. That was later. But <laughs> Herman always had a propensity, actually a keen knowledge, of bringing new composers to the radio. That was his goal, to introduce people to unknown and new composers. He was one of the first to do Charles Ives. He, was, he conducted many British composers at a time when very few British composers were known in America. And he also premiered a lot of American music. In 1946, he did a performance of the, the second performance actually, the Vaughan Williams Oboe Concerto over the CBS network with Mitch Miller as the soloist. And Douglas told me I was there for that performance. I was there in the studio for that. And we talked not long after we met over the internet on Facebook about Bernard Herman. And Douglas told me, I went and asked Benny if I could study with him. Nah, nah, you don't want to study with me. Nah, nah, you don't want to study with me. That was, that was Herman with his gruff, low east side accent. But he did teach Douglas Townsend one thing. He didn't teach him composition, but he taught him to appreciate all the composers that are around him, regardless of their idiom, regardless of who they were, and to bring them to the masses. And that's what Douglas did when I knew him. He, brought, he had a wonderful sense of bringing all these composers together, regardless of how they wrote or what they wrote or what idiom they spoke in. He believed in the composer and what they had to say. And he also believed in performers who were willing to take the chance and take the risk of doing whatever they wanted to with new music, or old music for that matter. He was very open to a lot of the styles, as you heard today in his music, it's, it's, it's very multifaceted in his style. Whether it's neoclassicism or romanticism, modernism, it's still there. But it's still one thing, it still speaks of one thing and one person. Douglas Townsend's ability to communicate with the audience and not <coughs> talk down to them. And he always had an excitement to talk about. He, he was very excited about music, about life, about everything. So. When finally, after we talked for quite a while, and I said, and he, I asked him, "Do you have anything for band?" He sent me CDs of his music, orchestral, chamber, and band. And I listened to them, and I said, "Okay, we're going to do something of yours. What can we do?" So he had suggested doing his Christmas fantasies for our concert in 2010. And immediately, as he said, "Well, you know, we've they've been done before." but you're going to be the first one to do all of them together. And I said, wow, we're honored. But needless to say, um, the first night, Douglas came up to Middletown, New York, to the Paramount Theater. It's a wonderful Art Deco theater that's in great shape thanks to the city of Middletown. And my wife and I decided to meet Douglas and Jean for the first time. We had never met at all. And we told them where to go to the, a certain diner on Route 211. And we had a blast. And you know, and when you see Douglas and Jean the first time, it wasn't just seeing two people. It was like they lit the entire diner. They, they were fantastic. And we were blown away by Douglas's knowledge, by his humanness, and by Jean's kindness. And so I said, okay, now we gotta get you over to the theater. And they did. And after the dinner, they had a wonderful dinner, got over to the theater. And I think both Douglas and Gene were blown away by the, the Paramount, and they were blown away by our band. And we did a great job. And needless to say, the band 
was very honored to see Douglas walking down spry. They didn't see a man in his autumn years. They saw a man who had greatness, respect, and honor. And they loved him for it. So when I mentioned to our the players in the band, SUNY Orange and Final Band, that he had gone on to another journey, some of them immediately wrote back to me saying, can we do the fantasies again? And we're going to. And I said, yes, we are. We'll do them again. I also want to say one other thing that has been said here by several of the other speakers is that he wanted to live longer. He wanted to live 50 more years. And I can appreciate that because I'd like to live to see my 100th year myself. And I'd like to live another 25 myself. I, I won't sell for 50, but I'll sell for 25 more after that. Because I feel that it's great to see how the world has changed. And yet, at the same time it's changed, one thing has always remained the same. That beautiful music, regardless of its idiom, never goes away. And performers who champion it never die. And Douglas Townsend's spirit not only just lives on those printed pages, it lives within all of us because we've all met him in one way, shape, and or form. And he's touched all of our lives. And we're better people for it. Thank you. <laughs>